So why dashboards? Well, number one, it creates leading indicators that look into the future for your business. So it's like radar in the airplane cockpit looking way forward so you can adjust before you get there. It's like a telescope sort of looking into the future because you can extrapolate on these numbers. Number two, it focuses people on what really counts. I, I guarantee you that if you get three people in the room, they will not agree on the relative priorities of the business. And so the strategic plan and the, the, the senior managers, you know, preferably the CEO, needs to specify priorities. The MBO makes that very clear. The MBE or dashboard makes it very measurable. So you can rotate through different areas of the business that you might be improving, different metrics, by trying different things. Um, you know, you've probably tried, if you try to get people to improve th three things at once, none of them will improve and they'll get very confused. So it's best to focus on one per month or one per quarter, depending how important that is. Number three, Dashboards expand the management staff scope and view of the business. It allows them to step back, which is empowering to the lower, the people under them, whether they're managers or supervisors or individual contributors. The fact that they can step back frees up more time for them. It gives them creativity. It gives them the opportunity to take some small risks because they don't have a manager hanging over. Every business has to get away from micromanagement. When you have your processes systematized properly, you move from micromanagement to management by objective to management by exception. And every employee and every process is, should be growing through those three phases over time. We'll talk that, more about that later in another module um, in PAMS, Performance Accountability and Merit System. Uh, number four. Dashboards create more synergy uh, and communications between the departments. Dashboards actually become a shorthand talk because what you have is a common language to reference things quickly and get people on the same page quickly. So that's a huge advantage as a shorthand talk across departments and both vertically and horizontally in the organizational chart. When all of the departments are used to dashboards, They'll be, managers will be able to do more things offline with each other, whether they're vice president level, manager level, supervisor level. They'll understand the concept of dashboards and that will uh, speed things up and speed trust up and communications up. Number five, dashboards institutionalize hard-won knowledge that needs to be trained and maintained as you have staff turnover. So it puts things into the permanent cadence and policies and procedures of the business so that when you have turnover of people, it's not as risky and doesn't cause as much damage. Um, number six, it's used for long-term strategic goals and, and should be tied into compensation plans, i.e., if you get a 10% improvement in this KPI in your department, you get a $1,000 bonus or a $10,000 bonus maybe with a, a big long-term goal. So that is a mechanism and a tool to motivate people with the financial, which is number three on the list, you'll find out in PAMS. It's not number one, but you want the ability to set those goals and challenge people, not just for compensation, but for, uh, for challenge and, and for what to focus on. I'd like to tell you a little story about sailboat racing and how the analogy of that maps to dashboards and metrics. This is a picture of my sailboat back in about 1995 when I started racing it. It's a Beneteau First 42, which is a combination racer-cruiser boat. So I had 13 sails for this. It was really outfitted well for racing because the previous owner had raced it quite a bit. But the idea was that, you know, I'm a guy who likes to read and I'll just immerse myself in stuff. So the winter before I was planning to start racing, I read a stack of books literally this high. I think there were eight different books on, on sailboat racing. I went to a sailboat racing course and all that sort of stuff. And I was really worried that I would look like a fool out on that racing course. And I would be lucky to, to not hurt my boat and come in in the back of the pack that first year. I was up against people with crews they'd been working with for 20 years. 
they would do what the Olympic sailors would do. They would have scuba divers put soap on the bottom of their boats at the beginning of races. They would have $20,000 in new sails every season that were very expensive carbon fiber. I mean, I was up against some very serious racers, including the Mass Maritime Academy, who had carbon fiber boat and everything. But the, the point of this is that there was a new technology coming onto the scene at this point. GPS was replacing Loran, and the satellites had just gone up so that you had great 24-hour coverage of GPS. And so I was one of the first people to buy a chart plotter. I think that was $1,200 back then. Um, it gave you a set of Earth, a 30,000-foot view of the ocean, which measured your real motion over the Earth as opposed to you having to mathematically constantly correct for tide and current and wind and, and angles and all those sorts of things. Now, obviously, if I didn't have the intellectual information in those books, I wouldn't have understood how to use the GPS. But the GPS was wonderful to make decisions. It gave me a huge advantage. We literally sailed six feet from the sandbars in the dark of night with a half moon, um, and other people couldn't do that. So we were able to shorten our course in the race over the people that were using Loran because we had better metrics. We had more accurate measurement of where the boat was. We also knew exactly when to tack because we would watch what's called the velocity made good on the GPS, which is the real distance you're closing even though you're sailing in a boat tacking this way and your point, you know, you might be going upwind, so the point you're trying to get to is that way, but you have to constantly tack. But we would know exactly when to tack because we had the satellite watching us from overhead and measuring, and we didn't have to calculate all these things which would wear out a navigator. So the bottom line is that we used that as a strategic advantage and were able to do very well, even though we were up against much better sailors, much better captains, much better crews, much better boats. And in the end, dashboards are really the GPS for your business. Having better metrics can give you enormous strategic advantage, advanced warning, and all kinds of advantages and differentiation in the marketplace. And you won't realize how powerful these are until you really see them and get used to them, and you'll never be able to go back. But the bottom line is, I took home a trophy from that very first race. Here I am with a lot more hair and a little less weight about 15 years ago, uh, holding the big trophy, and I beat the Mass Maritime Academy. I beat Swan 55 boats that cost five times as much as my boat uh, and had all the best sales. Why? because better metrics and measurement equals better results. And that's a perfect analogy uh, that applies to any business as well. So there's a book called The Fifth Discipline, which I recommend to all my CEO coaching clients. It's by Peter Senjay. And the biggest takeaway from that book is that in complex systems, people lose the connection between cause and effect. And essentially, that's what uh, the GPS of your business, the dashboards, is doing. It's allowing you to understand the delayed in, in space and time. They're separated, the cause and effect, and so by seeing that all on one page, all lined up monthly, you will figure out what the correlations are between, for instance, marketing and sales actions and sales growth that's delayed uh, between changing an offer and seeing your, your revenue or your uh, changing something in customer service and seeing your cost and your number of calls go down because you did a, a product release or positioned something differently. Those things get lost in an organization. The bigger it is, the more layers it has, the more they get lost. But even a business with 10 or 15 or 20 people will have that effect. So I do recommend this book, but that's the biggest takeaway from the book. In complex systems, people lose track of cause and effect, and so you can't tune your business if you don't know what the real root cause is of something. So that's a dashboard's major purpose, is to override that effect completely so that you're connecting and understanding all the cause and effects because there are hundreds of them in your business. Think of all the permutations. If you have five departments with a dashboard in each one plus a corporate dashboard, you might be talking about a hundred different numbers. 
And some of them relate directly to each other and some of them are completely disconnected, but there's a lot of interconnections and having a set of dashboards will really allow you to figure that out and fine tune your, your business much quicker. So um, Darwin, one of my favorite quotes said, it's not the strongest of the species that survive, nor is it the smartest. It's the ones that are the most responsive to change that survive. And the same is true of a business. We call the culture that we create in airtight management a Darwinian meritocracy because of this very quote and this very concept of evolution. You want your business to have this canai, the constant and never-ending improvement, to adjust and improve every single month. And a monthly review of a dashboard to look and understand those cause and effects and make slight tweaks in the business for trial and error, do A-B tests, whatever you got to do to figure out what's making the business better. A lot of people do that once a year. Imagine how much faster your business can take market share if it's doing it well once a month. It's a huge impact on the business. So think about Darwin and creating that kind of culture. Dashboards are the tool of constant and never-ending improvement.